here and welcome back to another vlog and today is a very special vlog because today I am at the National Air and Space Museum Smithsonian now we're probably gonna split this up into a lot of videos because there's a lot of stuff here and it's just way too much to put in one video basically so right now we are in the parking lot but we're gonna go right in and uh, check ourselves in so we're all checked in we got all our security checked we got our bags checked we're good to go and yeah also i don't have a tripod so but trying to max the best i can just holding the camera with my hand but that's fine oh uh, apparently they don't let tripods into the museum means they see like a fighting hazard or something but you know what that's fine up there we got our first airplane it's upside down and uh, that is the Pit Special S1C little stinker. Hopefully it doesn't stink too much. Definitely doesn't because, man, it is cool. And it's upside down. Must be a trick airplane. And over here, we are into the main museum. It's kind of like a hangar, a giant hangar. And uh, in today's video, we'll be covering this entire side, or at least try to, because there is a lot of stuff. So we're gonna head down this. It's gonna be a long way, but I'll get there when we get to our first aircraft. Um, I just spotted a good aircraft to see from, since I don't really we'll get a really good view from it since before. Uh, right there, you can see a military uh, drone that's... Um, they're very deadly, so don't mess with them. But yeah, don't worry, it's not gonna do anything. It's out of service and it's just hanging from a bunch of string up there. Probably high duty string because those things are heavy. And over here, we have a little uh, pl other plane. Thinking humans can't actually fit in it, but maybe like for robots or drone testing or something like that. And over here, huh, I wonder where these airplanes are covered in tarps though. Huh, beats me. And here, before it was covered in tarp, which I have no particular reason to know what it is for. It's like a, don't even know what you call it. It's like a plane with, instead of a fuselage, it's entire fuselage is basically a giant uh, rotor. It's, uh, that really made too much sense to me. But anyways, we are just about at ground level and I'll come back to you when we get there. All right, we made it to ground level. And right here, we have a nice little Cessna that before the pandemic and stuff, you could actually go in and uh, touch some buttons and do the, turn some things. But now we are on to our next airplane. Now this is one of the coolest. It's actually one of my favorite airplanes. It is indeed the Lockheed SR-71A Blackbird. Now the reason it's so cool is because, well, it's black and it's a bird, black bird. Also, it is super, super, super fast and can go faster than the speed of light. It is absolutely insane. And I believe only one of these were made, and it's right here. This is indeed the real Lockheed uh, Blackbird. Here you can see its engine intakes. Pretty huge. Let's see what's at the uh, back of them. So there we go. For some reason, there's a skunk up there. And here you can see the inside. Uh, once again, they are pretty huge. Uh, here's the little tip end here and here is the other intake right we made it to the place that is going to be the main topic of this video right here we have some um some flight suits and this is a u.s navy blue angel one and this is just a regular old generic one here's another one u.s army golden knights one jumpsuit oh there's an elephant over the PA 
Okay, I can't really pay attention to anything they're saying. It's probably not that important since they close in five hours. Here we have a MA2 flying helmet and a bunch of other airplane related stuff. Ooh, we have a US Air Force Type GNS1030 full pressure suit. That was um that was an astronaut suit for a second there, but apparently not. And over here, we have some stewardess uh, uniforms. Okay, now we're moving on to the actual planes over here. We got this one, gigantic jet. Uh, let me just get over here and see what it's called. Um, this is the Republic F zero F one zero five D Thunder Chief. So it's the Chief of the Thunder. Pretty cool name. So as you can see, has a bunch of missiles and rockets to shoot at enemy uh, personnel and people and such. And we have the uh, weather sensor right at the tip of the nose, right there. Of course, we have the main nose landing gear and the other landing gear over there in the back. And I don't really know what these things are for, really. Now we're new to this day. Now we're here. We have a rocket. Uh, SA-2 Guideline Missile. Not a rocket, a missile. I uh, don't like that. But it's, um, I think it's, yeah, it's, the, it's made by the Soviet Union. So, uh, let's not stick around. I don't want to be near that thing. Yeah, we have a Bell AH-1F Cobra. Now, this looks very heavy duty, this thing. It has its machine gun at the front. Looks like a three barrel one. And of course we got the two main cockpits. Uh, I think that's for the pilot or the gunner and that's for the main pilot or the gunner. And here's the, uh, I think that's the, um, what's it called? Um, completely forgot, uh, weather, weather weather sensor i think and yeah that's pretty much it for this thing and anyways moving on right here we have the bell uh Laracoin or something like that of course we have the weather sensor up at the front the uh the little skids the rotor and that looks like it's pretty much it. <laughs> and over here, we have the Boeing Vetrel CH-46E Sea Knight. So I'm guessing this is used for rescues and other sea type related missions. And there's the main cockpit, two rotor uh, style, Pau Mia there. The main door, a uh, couple of windows and just some strings to hold everything into place and over here we just have some stuff written here i'm not gonna go through it all since um uh, i don't like it and uh, it's not really pleasant but right here is one of the newer airplanes one of the newer exhibits added i think it was added last year or two years ago but still pretty dang new over here we have an Arthur Tor Turbo Tosmati flight suit. Looking, looking pretty sharp, dude. Definitely ready to do some flying with that thing. And over here we have the Skorsky GRS1. Now this is the newer exhibit that I was talking about. And it looks like from the main little information box that it there this is the main one and there's a little smaller one there on top of it but let me see if i can read some more information about it um it was it uh, jo actually joined the battle of pearl harbor now that is actually pretty cool and of course it was probably a seaplane as you can tell 
Oh look, it actually has a keel. That pretty much gives it away that it's a sea boat. And yeah, here are just the little pontoon support so it uh, doesn't tip anywhere or capsize. But yeah, looking pretty cool. It's got gigantic wheels. Absolutely massive. And some broken windows. And the main cockpit. And some rotors to push the air back to the wings to make it fly, basically. Here we have a loom missile. I'm gonna move on because I do not like that. And ooh, this is uh, looks like a much more interesting uh, craft. But before we look at that, here is a massive, gigantic door. So this is how they get all the new exhibits in, such as that plane that was part of the Pearl Harbor, the seaplane. Yeah, this is an absolutely massive door. Holy moly. But anyways, here's that craft I was talking about before. And here it is. The North American F100D Super Saber Ray thing. So pretty cool. Has a missile or whatever that is. Um, I don't think that's actually a missile. But things to help it fly in case of emergency, I think. Uh, I don't think that's a missile. I mean, it just doesn't look like a missile and definitely don't think that it is. And of course we have the main front nose landing gear and that's it for that. Now let's move on to the ever so famous Blue Angel McDonnell Douglas FA-18C Hornet. Now these are pretty famous. I know, I think a lot of people know about it. Thanks, you guys know about it. Of course, it has a very, very tiny, um, where is it hard to, oh yeah, put this camera here. Yeah, right, right there. That tiny little weather sensor, but probably very effective. These tiny things are quite effective. Here we have, um, uh, what are these called? Forgot. But it's here, and uh, um, it's probably a very common name. And yeah, I just feel free to roast me. And here we have yet another famous aircraft, the Grumman F14DR Tomcat. Now, I think it's pretty famous. Pretty sure. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Those are some massive intakes over there. Absolutely massive. And yeah, that right there is definitely a rocket, right there. And there, there we have the main cockpit and the nose landing gear. Very important for support. And over here, we have the Grumman EA-6B Prowler. Now, I think this would actually be on an aircraft carrier. <laughs> kind of gives it away with the folded wings right there. Um, they basically fold up the wings so they give more space on the aircraft carrier But yeah, massive massive weather sensor right there. Don't know why it's so massive could have been just like all the other planes But it must be hard to see with that thing jet intakes uh, Jet intakes. Yeah jet intakes right there main nose gear And yeah, that's it for that plane Moving on to this guy with this. I think that's the weather sensor. Not really too sure. Could be in another place, but I mean, it looks like a weather sensor. I mean, it's common for planes like this to have weather sensors in that place. Anyways, it's called the Lockheed Martin or Martian X-35B Joint Strike Fighter. Long, long name. But yeah, looks like it's made by the same manufacturer as the Blackbird that I looked at uh, a couple of minutes ago. And right here we have the Vought RF-8G Crusader. Now it has a main huge jet intake on the bottom of its belly. And some propellers or rotors there. 
and looks like it was also for aircraft carrier use because it has folded wings and over there um don't really know what that's called but i don't even want to go all the way over there just to look at it but we might go there at the end of the video probably uh just to end it off anyways right here we have some more missiles i don't think i really want to look at them and over here we have a Grumman A60 intruder. Pretty much the same as that one behind this one. But yeah, the only thing with it is it does not have foldable wings. And it has a bunch of missiles on it. I think those are missiles. Once again, I don't really know <laughs> the difference between missiles and something that's actually connected to the plane. But anyways, right here we have a super cool chrome plane, U.S. Air Force plane. That is the Lockheed T-33A Shooting Star. Kind of see what it's called, Shooting Star? With its super shiny chrome look. But jet intakes, landing gear, front landing gear. Uh, pretty cool plane. And don't really know what those bulbous things are at the tips of the wings. But if you know... Uh, yeah. Well, good job because that means you're an expert in planes. And over here we have the North American F86A Sabre or Sabre, and it's basically the same as all the others, but except it kind of looks like an eagle, kind of looks like a beak there, and the jet intake. And right next to it, what is this one called? Oh, sorry if the Polish Air Force MG, MIG-15 pilot suit is blocking the way. Yeah, this is the Mykowan Guric MIG-15 BIS Fagot B. Um, okay, long name. Don't really know if I understand it fully. Uh, let's move on to the last three planes of the video. This right here. We have the McDonnell F4S Phantom 2. And there you can see it's painted by whoever that is. Nose landing gear, wings, jet intakes. Uh, pretty generic stuff, if you ask me. Here we have something a little bit more interesting. Uh, here we have the McCowan Gulrich MIG21F Fish Bed C. Here. Also has a gigantic pointy weather sensor and another intake just at the front of the plane. And right here to end the video off, we have the Skoisky H0551. Now, very bulbous shape to it, uh, not the best of designs. Rotor there, and that's pretty much it. So that was it for today's video. If you enjoyed it, please don't forget to smash like, subscribe, and bell. And I'll be back with part two maybe later today or tomorrow. It depends, but I'll see you all guys in part two.